Let's take our Bibles. We'll go into Proverbs in chapter number 9 and read through this. There's only 18 verses. Let's go ahead and read through this and uh, um, follow along as we read through this, and then we'll have a word of prayer, and then we'll move on. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and read verse number 1. Start with verse number 1. Wisdom hath builded her house, she hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beast, she hath mingled her wine, she hath also furnished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens, she crieth upon the high places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, and live, and go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth the scorner getteth to himself shame, and he that rebuketh the wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. A foolish woman is clamorous, she is simple, and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house, and on a seat in the high places, to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are, <coughs> are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord and Heavenly, Heavenly Father, I pray to you, Lord, that you would just guide and direct and be with us as we go through the teaching of uh, chapter number 9. I ask you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit lead us and teach us. Give me the words to say that it might be help and not a confusion. And I pray to you, Lord, <clears throat> that we honor you in all things, because you're worthy of it, dear Lord, in heavenly name. Amen. There are going to be two contrasting calls representing two ways of life and each reaching two different outcomes. There are paths that we choose, and a lot of times in life, these paths that we choose, they're going to go someplace. They're always going to go someplace. But we don't know exactly, sometimes you don't know exactly where that's going to go. That's why it's so important that our Bible be our authority in helping us go in those particular ways. See, there, there's a false claim that goes out that all roads lead to heaven. Well, the problem is with that claim is when people say, well, all roads lead to heaven. That means I can do whatever I want at any time I want, and then all of a sudden I'm going to end up in heaven one day. Okay, that's not, a, that's not a correct statement, okay? Not all religions lead to heaven. Not all, uh, not all ways lead to heaven. Um, there, that's part of a problem. Now, can a person get saved out of other religions and other groups? Absolutely, they can get saved. They're not automatically Baptists, okay? Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Just because you're Baptist doesn't mean you're saved and you're on your way to heaven. Um, Baptist is just a, a way that we believe that uh, the Bible and its teaching and how Jesus taught his apostles leads in a Baptist way, okay? Uh, and that's why we, we recognize ourselves as Baptist. There's more to that, but uh, just in short. But there is going to be, the problem is, is we can't ever believe and not everybody can say that, well, everything's going to lead to heaven, so everybody's going to be there. That's a very, very false statement. And so when we choose paths, we got to make sure we choose it wisely because we don't know what's around the bend. We don't know what's coming up and so forth. So we have two different houses that we're going to look at. We've talked about this before, Wisdom's House, which also in the last chapter we saw has prudence that also lives wisdom that helps they work together. So this is broken down basically into three different groups in this chapter. Verses 1 through 6, verses 7 through uh, 12, and then 13 through 18, okay? So let's just look at verses 1 through 6 here first, and we'll see what wisdom's house looks like, and then we'll look at the fool's house, okay? Folly's house. So let's look at verses 1 through 6. We kind of read through the Wisdom hath built her house, she hath hewn out her seven pillars. Now, 
The thing about this is the seven pillars, we go, okay, well, I got to figure out what the seven pillars are. Not necessarily do we need to find something specifically because it's listed someplace, okay? Seven, all, for one thing in the Bible, symbolizes completeness, okay? But when a house is built on seven pillars, it's, it's talking about the strength, the, uh, the stability of the house, if you will, okay? Uh, some people, I was looking this up and I was seeing if what people would say were the seven pillars, and there's people who go, well, Sometimes it can mean this, sometimes it can mean that. Uh, Isaiah 11, 2, a lot of people talk about that because it's a description of the Spirit of the Lord, and it has seven different things in it. The Spirit of the Lord, wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. All right, that would be a good seven pillars that you could say that this would be on, right? You can also say it could be knowledge, understanding, counsel, might, fear of the Lord, discernment, and prudence. You can also say it could be salvation, baptism, reading your Bible. You can, okay, you understand what I'm saying? It doesn't, may, it doesn't have to be something specific, okay? Because it doesn't, there's no cross-reference to say that it's something actually specific. But it does say something that when something is built on something that has strength and stability, that it's going to be stronger, Right? Garrett works with things that needs to be with strength and stability. He knows that if it's got weakness in it, it's going to fall apart. It's not going to do well, okay? So it needs to have that strength. When, uh, when I was, I, my route was going over to Scottsburg and they were building that new bridge, okay? When they built the new bridge, what they did was is they put, they put these pylons in the ground uh, to get down to the rock bed and to give it that strength, okay? And then they put the concrete up above that. They had to find a foundation. So a foundation for a house of wisdom is going to be the seven, is going to be these pillars that are going to give it strength, okay? So verse number one, she hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beast, she hath mingled her wine, and she hath also furnished her table. So she has prepared a feast. So this wisdom, remember wisdom is referred to as a she in the other chapters. Wisdom has prepared a sumptuous feast reflecting the richness and satisfaction found in godly wisdom. Okay? There is a satisfaction when we go through the Bible and we find something that we have never found before. There's a, there, that's kind of fun. I find some things like that still. The, the, even going through Proverbs, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I've read through this multiple times, and I don't get some of those things, right? But when you start studying it out, that's where you find it. Look at verses uh, 3 through 5. She has set forth her maiden. She crieth upon the high places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanted the understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. So what is she doing? She is calling to those that are lack understanding, the simple, okay? And what she's saying, I have something that you will help you. I have food prepared. I have uh, this wine to drink. I have uh, give, uh, give you understanding because you don't have understanding. And then in verse number six, forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. Those who accept this wisdom invitation is a promise life and understanding. Okay, do you see those things in wisdom? They're, the wisdom is built on a firm foundation and there is substance to it. There's not just, uh, uh, there's just not nothing there, okay? Um, how many of you take a bag, uh, now, nowadays you go get a bag of chips, right? And you open it up because it feels okay and you open it up and there's, not that much in there. It's, it's very empty, right? It's not that much in there. I hate when that happens and you want more and there's nothing there. Now, let's look at the second part of this and that is the response to wisdom, okay? Look at the response, which is seven through uh, 12, seven through 12. Uh, he that reproveth the scorner getteth to himself shame and he that rebuketh the wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Okay, let's stop there for just a second. 
we just, they just got done with the Olympics, right? And in the Olympics, what do you have? You have these, these athletes and, uh, in different situations and they have a trainer. Now, what happens with, the, with the, those that are very successful, the trainer teaches them to do things specifically a certain way and a, cer and a certain, uh, that way is going to give them the best results, okay? So get those that say like the gymnast. The gymnast, and when the instructors are there, they're teaching them to do certain things. They're teaching them how to stand, the way to stand, how it's going to give them stability, how to get stability and strength, and the way to get the proper training. Now, the, the athlete, the gymnast, can do two, two different things. It can go, okay, I'm going to learn and learn what they have to say, and I'm going to get better at it, or... I'm just going to refuse what they have to say and do my own thing. You see, there's two different ways that we can all go. There's choices we make in everyday life that we do things, right? Um, <clears throat> when my boys were young and, they, and I give them, I say, listen, and I go uh, tell them that they need to do things a certain way, a certain way. They can do it the way I say, which might be the best way, or they could do their own way, which there could be different results because of that, right? So each and us has a choice that we make. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. See, God gives us instructions through his word, and when we accept that instructions, we can be yet wiser, okay? Look what it says in verse number 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. We've seen this fear of the Lord all the way through Proverbs, okay? It's at the beginning. It's at the core of that foundation, okay? For by me thy day shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself, but if thou scorneth, thou alone shalt bear it. Listen, each of us have to give an account of our own selves. The things that I do and the choices that I make are going to have consequences one way or another. All right? Now, let's look at the fool's house. All right? Let's look at the fool. Look at verse number 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. So verse number 13, the nature of fools. Fool, a folly is portrayed as loud, seductive, an ignorant woman. She appeals to those who are simple and lack understanding. Now, so she also has an invitation. Look, look at the invitation. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their way. So both of them have invitations. Wisdom is given an invitation and a fool is given an invitation, right? <clears throat> Folly sits in a prominent place calling out to those who are passing by. She offers, look what she offers in verse number seven. Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. She offers stolen waters and bread eaten in secret, which seems very deceptive in what is being offered. And then there is an outward, then there is an outcome of that. Those who accept Folly's invitation are unaware that her house leads to death. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we see this all the way through. Now, let's, let's break it down a little bit in what we're talking Let me show you a story here that might break it down a little bit. Okay. In 1881, Arthur Carlo Collodi from Florence, Italy, wrote a classic children's story he called The Adventures of Pinocchio. This is a book that inspired the 1940 Disney movie of the same name, the story of the wooden puppet who eventually becomes a real boy. All of us know the story uh, of Pinocchio uh, and him becoming a real boy. 
But the major difference seen between the book and the Disney movie, in Disney's version, Pinocchio comes to life as a likable boy who's basically a good person, but who makes some poor choices. Contrast this to the original novel, where Pinocchio is an ob obnoxious, selfish brat who immediately, after he comes to life, sticks out his tongue, kicks Geppetto in the nose, and runs out of the shop into the streets, where he gets Geppetto arrested and thrown in jail. No, I've never read the original book, but... It's kind of dark. <laughs> now, then he is rebuked by a hundred-year-old cricket who says, boys who turn against their parents and run away from them for no reason never come to any good. They will soon be sorry for their wild ways. In response, Pinocchio throws a hammer at the cricket and kills him. Fantastic story, right? <laughs> now, all of this was too dark for Walt Disney, so he ordered an upgrade for both the puppet's character and the cricket's role. Okay, good thing, because uh, there's not a really good movie in the original book, obviously, to where the, he kills everybody and uh, everybody dies and, you know, whatever. <clears throat> there are similarities as well. Pinocchio continually has to choose between voices of wisdom and voices of foolishness. The voices of wisdom come from his father, Geppetto, the cricket and the good fairy. And the voices of foolishness primarily come from a cat and a fox. Okay, you can see the deception if, uh, that's going on, right? When you see the story and so forth. Pinocchio is on his way to school trying to obey his father when the cat calls out and asks, where are you going? Why to school, of course, Pin answered Pinocchio. School, sneered the fox. Why waste your time going to school? A talented boy like you should be on the stage. Do you mean to be an actor? Asked Pinocchio with wonder. Yes, just think of it. Bright lights, music, the roar of applause and fame. Come with us. And <clears throat> said the fox uh, slyly, we'll make you a star. And so off Pinocchio goes with Cat and the fox where he ends up in disaster after disaster. See, in reality... Both doors to the houses look appealing. It's when you go through the door that you find out there's a problem. See, you saw that, the, that, they're, that both of them are offering something very, very similar. Let me, where's my thing here? Oh, come on, one more. Didn't go page far enough. All right. Look at the, both of the houses have similarity. Both of the things are very, got something going for it. They're both a house, right? And they probably both have an appealing door to go through. But look at the comparisons between the two. The wisdom's house is built on seven pillars. It represents strong and complete and a stable foundation. But yet the foundation of the fool's house um, is, uh, has no such foundation suggesting instability and danger. See, Wisdom's house, first thing you see is it's built on a foundation. The Fool's house never mentions a foundation at all. There's no foundation at all. Both of them are inviting people to come. Wisdom has prepared a feast symbolizing nourishment and life and invites all who are simple or lacking understanding to partake. But the fool has an invitation. Uh, <clears throat> both call out to simple, but wisdom offers true nourishment and life, while the fool offers fleeting pleasure that leads to death. What is the outcome? Entering wisdom house leads to life and understanding. Entering the fool's house leads to death and destruction. So you can see that in both of the picture that you see right there. Um, in the movies, what do they do? They portray the good guy and the bad guy. The bad guy always wears black. The good guy wears white. When the black guy is always in darkness. When the black guy comes in, uh, the dark guy comes in, uh, like Darth Vader, there's always that sinister music that comes with it, right? And then when the good guy comes in, there's always a different music that comes with him. There's always something different about the good and the bad. Think about this. Uh, all of us have, at one time, there's a lot of advertisement on television, there's a lot of advertisement 
on newspapers, magazines, doesn't make a difference. There's advertising everywhere. Now, now you have to buy, pay if you don't want to watch advertising on the streaming services. They got them all down there now, right? Think about the difference between the Whopper that's advertised and the Whopper that you actually get. They are never the same. You can go now. This is the same with any 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 burger joint, McDonald's. Uh, Ron and I will sometimes go after church and we'll get something like uh, fillet of fish. Now the fillet of fish is supposed to be like look really good on the picture and when they show it up on the screen, but yet when you actually get it, it's off cockeyed to the side. It got one little squirt right in the middle of it for their whatever that tartar sauce or whatever it is, and then and it's and it doesn't look the same, right? Um, how about this? You, they advertise uh, for the Hyatt and how close you are to the Capitol building. And then you look at, go there and you see the real picture and it's nowhere even close. Uh, it is all the way down the street. Think about this, you, uh, you want to order this berry loaf with uh, berries in it and that's where you, you get the berry. <laughs> It, it, it's not wrong. It does have a berry in it. It just doesn't, it's not the same as what it says. Or you go and order the six foot green Canadian pine tree online and that's what you get when you get it. Uh, it's, it's just not the same, right? Or you order for the kids a, a world of dinosaurs and in it is dogs and cats. Not quite the dinosaurs that you thought you were going to get. Or, or you get this, and you order this rope for climbing, and the guy's on there climbing, and it says on the, bo on the bag, not suitable for climbing. <laughs> See, there's all kinds of things out there, like reality, let's, let's bring it down to reality, okay? Reality in movies and in advertising is not the same as it is in real life. So when we look at these verses, let's apply them to something of real life, okay? So think about this. A young Christian says, I want to develop a, a deep and lasting intimacy with God so he gets up early, mor uh, every morning early and reads his Bible, his newspaper. Or nowadays, it's get online, yeah. right? It, you get on your iPad, you get on your phone, and you got the first... I listen to people on iPads and sometimes what they say, I mean on podcasts and the things that they say is the first thing they do is look up their social media. I don't really care what people have to see. I, I, don't, I, I don't go on social media to see what people have to respond to on what I say. How about this one? A man says, I want to grow old and invest the latter years of my life in my, uh, in my, in my grand, with my grandchildren, but he neglects his health. See, we make choices all through life in the things that we do, right? Um, how about this one? A couple says, we'd like our children to develop a personal relationship with God and choose friends who have done the same, but then they skip church every weekend and head to the lake. See, now, there's something appealing about the things about our health, and there's something appealing about the things of going to the lake, obviously, and there's something appealing about doing something else besides reading our Bible, okay? Uh, or this one here, newly, uh, newlywed determined to be financially secure by the time they reach their parents' age, then adopt a lifestyle sustained by debt and uh, leverage assets. Mm -hmm. See, we make choices every day, and these are reality choices. Or this one, a high school freshman intends to graduate with a GPA that will afford him options as he selects a college but neglects his studies. <laughs> the way he plays his video games. Um, See, Isaiah 5.20 says, Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 12.13, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Not my social media, not uh, what the news are of the day, not any of those type of things. There those things are fleeting and will go away. Chapter 9 serves as a clear warning. One path leads to life and understanding, while the other leads to death and destruction. The fear of the Lord is the key 
to choosing wisdom. Verse number 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge, um, <clears throat> knowledge of the holy is understanding. Remember, that's what it uh, talks about in Proverbs chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 27, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. All through Proverbs and so far what we've seen, we see wisdom and we see the foolish. Both of them have choices that they make. Both of them are the choices that they make lead one way or another. In Proverbs chapter 9, we've seen this in other chapters, what happened, uh, verse number, one, um, verse number uh, 6, uh, forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. Choose the way, choose the way of the fool, but, uh, verse number 18, but he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. So, when you choose, choose fool's door, when you go in, all of those guests are already in hell. That's where they already are. But see, that's the choices that each, and a, each of us have to make. And we have to choose early when we make those choices. Uh, for years and years, I played basketball like crazy. Every week, I probably played, what, three, four, five times a week? So my knees are weak because of it. I've had four knee surgeries and <clears throat> so forth because I chose to do that. Did that playing that basketball get me anywhere? It got me nowhere. I wasn't, I didn't become professional at all. <laughs> I didn't even make one dollar for it uh, playing basketball. Uh, it's the same thing in life. See, there is one thing that God tells us that the conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. There are so many things that we choose and the life choices that we make have, make a difference in our lives and the things that we do. Sometimes it's, it's I just need, I don't want to read my Bible. I don't want to take the time to do that. I don't want to do some of those things but I need to stop whining about it and just do it. That's what I need to do. How many times have you heard somebody say, um, like, well, <clears throat> I just need to lose the weight. I just need, uh, I'm gonna eat this donut and then I'm gonna go on my diet. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do that. Well, why not start before the donut or the pizza or whatever is your, whatever's your weakness? Everybody's got their own weakness. Why not start before that? Uh, why is it that people go, uh, I'm going to start reading my Bible in January 1st. And then by February, they're already done. They're already finished. They st why not start right now? If, if, if reading your Bible, like if you haven't gone through the podcast, it, start now. Don't, don't go backwards, just start and go forward. Don't, don't, uh, I read through a proverb, a chapter of Proverbs every day. And at the end of the month, uh, if it's the 30th, I read two chapters. Uh, and then I go to the first, I go back to the beginning and I start all over again. Okay. Sometimes I'll get caught up in something and I won't read. Now I haven't done this for a while, but if I do, why not start where I'm at? Today, what are we at today? We're at the 25th. So we're at the 25th today, all right? Read today. Read the 25th chapter. Or if you don't want to read Proverbs, go and read, say, your other Bible reading. Read something. Um, uh, we memorize scripture. Um, well, I believe that all of these things are commanded in the Bible. Reading, memorizing scripture, reading our Bible, uh, uh, going to church, uh, those are all commanded. Well, if I haven't done it for a while, start today. Don't wait till the first. Wait, well, I'll, my New Year's resolution, that's what it is. My New Year's resolution. Hey, you know how many people actually keep New, Year, New Year's resolutions? No, no, nobody does. 
I never make a New Year's resolution. Why? Because I'm probably not going to keep it anyways. I'm probably not going to keep it. But you, you, you see how wisdom and folly in this is both of them have a choice, that people have a choice in the way that they choose. Both of them are calling. Both of them are given an invitation. One invitation has something truly uh, in depth to give. Wisdom does. Fools, the foolish woman, she is clamoring. She is simple and knoweth nothing. She sitteth at the door of her house on the seat of the high place of the city. So she sits up tall. She's in places. She's in the open. She's where everybody else is. But yet her invitation is hollow. Got nothing in it. It's got stolen waters uh, and bread eaten in secret. And it always is going to lead to death. And it's always going to lead to hell. Listen, we make choices every day. <clears throat> make the right choices. That's what's going to be hell. Make the right choices. Uh, when we don't make the right choices, you know what we do? We fix it. The Bible says that God is, for, uh, he is ready to forgive. So we make the right choices. When we do the wrong thing, ask for forgiveness and move on. It's not that hard. But you know what we do? We make it really hard. I don't know why we do that, but we tend to make it really hard. We just need to make the right choices. That's what the Bible, that's what Proverbs is telling us. It's all through Proverbs. Make the right choices. Have a firm foundation. 